future Asia and I are going over the process on what to do when you have a listing appointment. Um, do I need to repeat that? Because the thing just went on. I know, I, know. I saw it. I said, all right, well, I guess it's repeat. You can if always cut it out later. In the future, Asia and I are reviewing the processes on prepping for your listing appointment and what to do and how to handle yourself on said listing appointment. So this is super exciting. So the first thing that you do, and you have a pen and paper, correct? I usually do. Because there's going to be several notes here. All right, let's go. All right, so the first thing is you have to verify ownership, um, which means you're going to go to your local jurisdiction and pull the public record and or a copy of the deed. You want to make sure, I mean, it sounds silly, um, but you wanna make sure that the person who is raising their hand saying, yes, I'm interested in selling my house, you wanna make sure that they actually have the right to sell said house. Um, true story, and I'll skip several of the details um, because it's a really funny story, but, um, I got a call from someone in my neighborhood that wanted, this was in like 2006, someone who wanted to sell their house. I show up, she shows up. Um, I say, okay, let's put this on the market. And um, she actually produces a deed, right? So you may also ask for if they have a copy of their own deed, right? So sometimes um, as the preliminary kind of due diligence before the appointment, hey, do you have a copy of your deed? Sometimes they can just send it over to you. If they don't, you can just go and look it up in your local jurisdiction. Um, looking up a deed and looking up the public record are different. Um, I would need to check um, Pennsylvania rules. I don't know them exactly, but in Maryland, we have um, a website called SDAT, the State Department of Assessments and Taxation. Um, that only gives us the public record and the tax information. Um, it does cite who the owners are, um, but what you really, really want is a copy of the deed, which um, you find in the re land records. So you're going to have to look in your land records. So there's two places that you want to look, the land records and the um, SDAT, the State Department of Assessments and Taxation. So when my clients produced her deed, I read it and I now see that there's someone else on the deed. And I'm like, so who is this person? Oh, that's my ex-husband. Oh, well, we need them to sign too. You do? Yes. Yes. I can't sell this without his signature. So I had to go and track him down and then he wanted part of the proceeds because he was on the deed. So um, that is why step number one, understanding and reading the deed is super duper important. Make sure that the client that you're in engaging with is actually has the right to sell the property. Um, that's number one. Number <laughs> two, in the preliminary questions, you want to ask them, um, you know, if there are any liens on the property, hence a mortgage, or any other liens that they know about. Sometimes there are liens on a property that people don't know about. And that's okay, but there's a little law that says we need to know what we need, what we should have known, right? So when, what that law means is that we need to know the questions that we're supposed to ask, okay? Now, our team has a form in jot form that you can send to the seller, which is those preliminary questions. And that does include that in there. So um, let me go to jot form. This also helps us in doing home sellers questions. Wait, 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 wait. There's former landlord form, ask me anything multiple over. I had two seller questionnaires. I think this one is actually after you get the listing. So preliminarily, you just want to make sure that your client is the owner and then ask if there are any um, liens on the property, primarily a mortgage. 
now you know a little bit of what you're working with, right? So once you've got those two things, it's like, okay, now you're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna go over to Compass and we're gonna do a listing. Um, who are you? We are going here, right? Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. OK, so um, we're going to go to Compass. And we're going to do two things here in Compass. Now I need to switch regions, so give me a second. Mm -hmm. Going to go to PA. All right, and then we're going to go to Workspace. We're going to go to CMAs. And we're going to click create new. You've done these before, yes? Yeah, I have one of those going for okay. him. What is, oh, you do have one going for him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I okay. have an issue with it, though. Okay, for purposes of training. Yeah. Since we're recording that. this, we'll just do it. What is the address? 139 Bartram, B-A-R-T-R-A-M Avenue. Which one? In... Essington. Scroll mm. down. You can see. Uh, Let me finish. B A R T R A. M. Mm -hmm. See, but why isn't this coming up? It came up. See, when I first did the CMA, I started it way back in July because he saw the market was high. I was like, maybe I should sell. And then he changed his mind. Let me see if I can find the MLS number. So is there a south or north or anything? So 139 B-A-R-T-R-A-M, right? I'm spelling it right? Yeah, it's not you, because the same thing happened on HomeSnap, and it was just pulling up everybody else's house but his. And I was like, what the? Yeah, there's no here. I don't remember who was spelling. Who the hell are you? There was something about it. Hmm. So I know the zip code is 19029, and that might make a difference, but I don't know if you can add it into that part of into that field. Well, you can also see where it says enter property manually. Mm -hmm. You can go there too. So 139 B A R T R A M. There it is. Um, and so is this correct? 19029 PA property types. What kind is this a what is it? It's a house. It's like a single family house. Right here? Yeah. Okay. How many bedrooms and bathrooms? Three beds, one and a half baths. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> the square footage is 16 something. I just can't remember the exact number. Okay, it's okay. You don't actually need okay. to do all of this. So see here, it says automatically find similar listings, set all search filters in the next step. Mm -hmm. So now you can go here. Sometimes it goes a little too far out for me. So mm -hmm. I, oh, I wanna zoom in a little more. Right, so here's Bartram, okay, so <clears throat> this one here looks like it could be, oh, that's that one right there, 212, 241. Are these semis or is this a whole house? I see two doors. Yeah, it says, it, when I saw that one, it said it was a, just one house, but it looks, it does look weird. But don't you see two doors? This one looks yeah. like it might be two doors too. All right. But look, it's detached. It's just really close to the one next to it. It's, so it's one single house. It's not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you think this 195 one is comparable? That's this one, 231. Because you've got, a, that seems grossly different than the other price wise. Oh, that's because this one looks like it's a total piece of shit. Okay, that's fine. Um, 
What is this sod? Where is that? I saw that one too. Oh, 57,000. Jeez, oh, Pete. 95,000. It's this one for 172. No. What's this one over here for 290? So, okay, hang on. If you don't like, so another um, B A R T R U M A M A M. So, Another little trick that I'll do sometimes is, um, so you know this guy's house, right? Oh, I can see the gap between the two mm -hmm. now. So you might get a call for a property or maybe it's a Sierra lead or a Zillow lead and, and you get this address and they're like, yeah, I need to sell it. And you're like, I have no idea. So just literally Google it so you can at least get an idea of what what you're dealing with right like like when you're looking at comps am i dealing with this or am i dealing with this now which one is this this one or this one it's the one on the end so this. it's the end of the row house it, okay. I, I had not, so much trouble. Attached. i see it i see the gap in between yeah i had so much trouble like pulling actual comps because this area is weird because like see how different that house looks from this like, one mm -hmm. yeah like all yeah. of them look different it's like they don't even belong on the same block so let's like see, look, like, let's see the, the street. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like all of them are just like, mm, I just put this up when I felt like it. It doesn't go with any of the other houses. Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, you, I mean, the appraiser is going to need. So then what's going to wind up happening is we're going to, we're going to use, you know, condition, general market value. And, um, you know, and obviously this is where you being the professional will also be super helpful. Um, right to a homeowner because it's not like you know it's rows and rows of the same freaking house it's yeah it's, right so okay now this house back here looks like it could be similar do you see that one right there mm -hmm. right so okay so this was helpful now i know what i'm dealing with now here's my other question that's got a window unit does this one have air conditioning do you know central air it does okay so let me see why can't i get back in here i might need to reset my password um so i will do that okay so let's go back that's right here so i am curious the view that we were just looking at was probably this way so this might be a good comp remember i picked this mm -hmm. one mm-hmm 146 that seems too small too tiny but we gotta just look we gotta there's just no look is there a picture no there's no picture but we have to just look here now here's my other question for you and as you are learning how to do values this is why you know the property visits are so important um how well do you know this neighborhood not very well now i've never actually seen his house Okay, so I would highlight, when are you meeting with him? Um, he hasn't really given me a date yet. He's still in shock from, from being let go from his job. And oh, that sucks. Well, yeah. I would maybe spend some time kind of driving around here. Maybe even yeah. like you've got this one. I would preview this property. Actually, now after looking at it, this doesn't look too shabby as a decent comp. This Poulsen Ave right here. Mm -hmm. What's this one? 300? Probably. I know, it's right up the street. What's that? What's... No, I know, right? So there. I'm, I'm going to check this one too. <laughs> and then um, this one's under contract. What's this one look like? Maybe. All right. So we picked a bunch. So this is what I do, right? And then we're going to go to next. And now you can kind of see. Can you see my whole screen? Mm -hmm. I can see them all lined up together. Okay. Right? So you can, and you've done this before, so you know, like, and now I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, that one's probably, you know, fairly comparable. It's, it, I think the condition is probably not so great. Um, this one might be also comparable as far as size. This one probably not, because I think this extra outbuilding is probably throwing it off. Oh, and look, it's got an extra lot. Actually, no, mm -hmm. uh, one, two, so, a few lots, it looks like. Um, Oh, that's the 300. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. that's the 300. So the other thing too, is if you're like here, like if this doesn't work, you can then delete it. Right. So it just took it out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, this one right here. 
I can't tell if that is two or one. Um, it's it's two. It's definitely two. But this is going to help us because this one, see, it's a townhouse, and this one sold for two forty one. Looks like it has you know a reasonable kitchen, up great updated floors at two forty one. This one is also a semi detached, also sold for two forty one, looking very similar. So that's not too shabby. And then we have this one at 172. So now I'm a little bit more encouraged. Um, I think that when you review the comps with him, you need to show him these lower comps just to let him know because you don't know what you're walking into. Are you walking into this or are you walking into this? I know it's renovated. Um, it is renovated. Okay, great. Well, then, then you you might likely be closer to that two forty one range. Okay. Um, now, when when you do trainings, there is a lot of conversation on do you do the two step listing appointment or the one step listing appointment. Um, I am a one stepper, and that might be some of my anxiety because I am afraid that. If I don't come in prepared, that somebody else will, and that they will just sign the documents. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. So, um, so I do as much due diligence as I possibly can ahead of time. So that's why I'm going to pull the comps. And again, if you don't know what the condition is, you're telling me it is renovated. Again, everybody's definitions can be different sometimes. So you know, you can you can hope that you're getting this, but you might still walk into this. You you just don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to be prepared. Um, and that's why I'd also definitely go preview um, either one of the, but honestly, these are both active. And when mm -hmm. you go into the appointment, you can then be like, I saw the two, you know, the two that are, you know, your potential competition. Um, and you know, this is where you fall within that competition, um, because you've already seen them. So that's great. Right. Um, and so honestly, I don't necessarily put a lot of stock into here until I, I physically get into the property, but I, I want to look at all of the varieties, right? Like again, the $50,000 ones aren't applicable. And that $300,000 one wasn't applicable once we, looked at the Google street view, right? So I'm going to hit next and then I'm going to hit next and I'm going to honestly leave this alone, right? Now mm -hmm. you can print this, which I don't always do. And the reason, so I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. So the reason I don't print it is because when you get there and you walk in, you're like, oh, okay, now you know what you're dealing with. So you then make, I will make adjustments on the spot right there. Okay. So let's say it is renovated in our definition, then I would take out the unrenovated ones and say, okay, now that I'm here and I can see the condition of your property, these don't really apply. So we're gonna take these out. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's okay to be a work in progress when you're with the client because you're working you know one of the things that i like to say to people when i'm there is this is a team effort yes you're hiring me for my expertise but this is 100 percent a team effort i'm going to be here with you helping you all along the way but we have to work together to make this happen right. so so same uh, as with a buyer like you it, exactly it really is kind of the same as with the buyer so i then have this ready to go and um and then i'll um i'll tell you what the process is i'm right now just telling you all the prep that i do on a listing appointment so i do the cma and i let that sit there okay then i'll preview properties the com competing properties if i need it um if i don't know the neighborhood as well as i'd like to um and then i want to go in and i want to get my listing presentation so when you click on um, when you click on marketing, you're going to go to print, and this should be shared with you. And then you can click on listing presentation. Now, um, when you click on listing presentation, I believe it's in my custom templates. Nope, I take that back. It's in my designs. Great, there it is. 
So you see where it says copy, copy, copy of final listing presentation? Mm -hmm. um, so that's because I have made so many damn copies of it. So let's, um, I think this one is actually the one you want to make a copy. And it should, if not, um, maybe what we do for you right now is make like your own. So this is the, the physical, I, this I print out ahead of time because it doesn't have comps in it. Mm -hmm. This is who we are. So we're going to change this address. What is the address? 139. Bartram, B-A-R-T-R-A-M. 139. 136. No, 139. You had it right. So then this is wrong. Then I did this wrong. Is that just telling you where you are in Google? Because you're not right in front of the house. Maybe. Okay. So 139. I'm going to... Mm -hmm. I'm going to fix it. And what is the guy's name? Vincent. Ohm, O-U-M. Got it. So here, then we're going to choose you. And we're going to move on. Now, once you're here, Um, this is now totally up to you. You can take this page out. That's right here. Delete page, right? right. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to promote this, you can just promote yourself, right? I'm going to, I'm going to share this with you. So I'm not going to actually delete any pages until you, you can custom. And we're going to just talk about customizing this as your own. You know, if you want, you can legit come right in here and go to photos and what do I my media where are you girl I know you're in here hold on you're in here all right Touch you. What the cat? Mm -hmm. He's gonna be like, ooh, is it my time? No. Not your time. Okay. This guy opened the balcony yesterday and walked out. Great. The cat? Yeah. You're kidding me. He's a Siamese. He's they're so smart, and you're just like, great. Now I have that to worry about. <laughs> talking on the phone. I looked over he had opened the door and walked on out like he was paying the rent. That's pretty funny. Tiana was like, is he trying to get out? I was like, he's not trying to do anything. He's on the balcony enjoying the weather. So I replaced you. You're, okay. I replaced myself with you. You can, you know, you can say, hold on here. Come on. No. The nun smoking in the background will always be my favorite. Oh my God, I loved it so much. <laughs> um, there we go. Have you written your bio yet? A new one aside from the one that's on my agent page. Um, Agent there you are. So I would go and you can copy and paste, redo okay. all this, whatever. Like I've changed this for you now. Okay? okay. But you still need to go in here and finish this page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is going to be yours. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to rename this and I'm going to say Asia. Um, Listing presentation template, make a copy. Okay, so you're going to want to spend a little bit of time working on that. Like, again, we've changed out the front. Mm -hmm. 
you can, if you had a photo, it would show up here. Okay. Okay. Of the house. Mm. So again, this is a different page, right? You're going to have to make updates to this. So this is also a page that I customize for each listing presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can, again, I left that here. You can change all of the areas. So I'm going to put right there and let you change it. Mm -hmm. And then for example, you can go in here and choose different listings based on where you're going. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and don't worry about them being listings per se, um, that you sold. If it's a buyer sale, fine. If it's one of Mike's sales, fine. Don't give a shit. Just put them there. Okay. Okay. And then after you build up a few more of sales, you'll be able to plop in your own. Okay. Okay. But what I'll do with these is I'll rotate them out for, um, to target where I'm going. Right. Right. If I'm doing like this, this, it's funny because clearly I fucked this up. It should have said, um, Harford County, um, because the last listing appointment that I went on, um, was this avatar court. And one of the reasons that she said she didn't want to hire me was because I wasn't located in Bel Air or Harford County. And I was like, um, I've sold houses here. It doesn't matter. And so then I picked these three listings. Um, if I was putting a property on the market in the city, I would choose city listings. If I was putting, do you see what I'm saying? Like, and the beauty of this is, um, so I'm going to put in here, insert um, appropriate. The fuck? What happened? Okay, so if you click on this, this works like the other things. You can just see how it says listing number one, listing number two, right? You can switch them out, okay? Mm -hmm. so I would put in the areas of expertise and obviously make sure that the neighborhood that this house is in is in that list. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can um, swap out a different picture of Philly. Right. Okay, so this page you want to customize as well. Mm -hmm. So the next page here is this is a static page. You don't need to change this. Um, the the one thing you really want to ask every home seller is what is the most important thing about the realtor you choose to represent you? And you shut up. When you ask this question, you just legit shut up. Now, this guy has never sold a house before, right? right? This was his first house. So you want to make sure that you are just, he may go, I don't know what you mean. Um, you know, and it, I've never had anybody say that. I've only had people almost instantly say one of the things, the money actually three, th three things they say three things i want someone aggressive i want someone honest and i want the most money or something along those lines or right. i want if they've if they've had a bad experience they'll they'll talk about community they'll talk about what they hated about their bad experience communication lack of communication or communication or you know they didn't feel like the their agent was working for them or whatever there's a variety of things that people get pissed off about but this is a really great opportunity for you to talk about their past real estate experiences mm -hmm. Um, and so again, you may want to customize this that says I've lived in Baltimore for 20 plus years. So um, you can change this page. Mm -hmm. So page five, change that page. But I would leave this Real Trends rankings here because that is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, and you can take, we ranked number 23 in the state of Maryland for number of homes sold. You can take that little statement out if you want. 
Right. Um, but it's still impressive, right? So right. Um, team leader with, and then here, if you want to take my information out, this is where you can say, you can, you know, hey, my team leader has, it's, uh, you know, whatever, 10 agents to serve, you know, and you can swap it out, Philly and Baltimore, make Philly the, the primary. Um, over 200 sales in the last two years. I actually think it's more than that. <coughs> um, higher sales price. Um, I think we're actually at like 80 some. Five star reviews. So here's Randy Lynn. Here's the Baltimore. And again, we can rearrange all of this too. And And again, I have these because this I do primarily Maryland mm -hmm. and I'm tweaking the I'm tweaking mine because I tweaked it I tweaked the rest of it the way I wanted to so again you can take this entire page out and then just change this around and leave Randy in here as your operations manager mm -hmm. okay right now and then if then you can take this page out too um uh, these are um Testimonials that if you want to, again, the more, the better, and you can change these out to your own testimonials because you have a couple, mm -hmm. you know, have Tiana give you a testimonial, have the condo guy give you a testimonial, and then leave some of the team testimonials, have some, some of Mike's, whatever, like there's a whole lot of ways you can do this and, um, and so forth and so on. So this one, again, we can just take out the address like legit, just take the address out and leave the before and afters. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because right. it still gets the point across and nobody necessarily cares. Um, and then again, here are more, you know, case studies. Um, this talks about having a team and pets and things like that. And this is a hilarious picture from a client of ours. She, Sharon hated cats, <laughs> hated them. And this cat would not leave her the fuck alone. It was pretty funny. Um, so these are case studies and what I would want to hear from you is what do we want to include, not include, what can we just kind of flub for the lack of better, you know what I mean? Because these are all still experiences. It doesn't matter that they're not in Philly. Right. It does not matter that they're not in Philly. So don't focus on that because it's still experiences. Um, then that we talk about, this is all compass stuff, compass, 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 mm -hmm. compass, 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 compass. Okay, so this is a, um, a page that is proprietary to me, um, meaning this is my strategy that I teach that there are two phases to selling your home. There's get the buyer and then there's keep the buyer. Um, both of them are equally as important, especially in this market, because yes, you have probably heard that houses are selling very quickly and even with multiple buyers, right? So why do I care about keeping the buyer? Well, we care about keeping the buyer because if we lose the buyer, then we have lost a lot of time on the market. And then suddenly people start to go, what's wrong with the house? Mm -hmm. So it is very, very important to do both phases and our team does both. Our team does a very, very good job at making sure that we are selecting the best qualified buyer for your home. And then we handhold the entire process all the way to the closing table till you get your check. We attend everything. We attend the inspections if there are any. We attend appraisals. We attend everything. We take care of everything from start to finish. So you don't have to change anything here. We just leave this alone. Then you have marketing by creating exposure. This is, again, a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, you can add in here. Um, hold on. Shop, oops, P H I Philly homes.com. Let's make that go a little bit more. There we go. Realtor.com. There we go.
Um, then this walks you through the steps. Then we, you talk about the value. And then here are the pitfalls. Now, this is another page that is just mine. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna find this in the stock compass listing page presentation. Um, and what I'll do is these are the top pitfalls to avoid in selling your home that we have established over the many, many years of helping people sell homes. And I literally will put it in front of people and I'll go, is there anything in here that might fit you? <laughs> and I literally shut up and let them look through it. And I kid you not, sometimes they'll go, oh, that one or that one, right? I had a really good friend of mine go, oh, that one, this number three, right? So you just let them shut up and then it's your opportunity to actually overcome those objections before we deal with them. Mm -hmm. These are common pitfalls to avoid in selling your home, right? Um, then we talk about Compass Concierge and the steps in selling. Here's, this is some general stuff. This talks about getting the property priced right from the beginning because you have the most amount of activity in the first week or two. Um, this also talks about here, and I can go over some more of this stuff with you. Um, like the, again, the Compass Concierge, which is so good, and you've already done that once, and you know how to talk about managing that. This talks about before and after, the power of photography. We, you know, we use the great photographers. We have all the channels. Um, you know, here's virtual marketing um, when necessary. There's the private exclusive, which is really popular in Philly, leveraging the network, the Compass Network tool. Like, so there's all of this good stuff, right? Um, monitoring, all of this is company. And then I love this final page. This is a Compass thing, and it really does the call to action. Now, before, so I'm gonna, let me share this with you so you can do it. There you go, girl. Thanks. All right, so that one's now yours. I want you to make it yours. Like you're gonna make this totally yours so that now this is your baseline copy to have, okay? So now, when so there's one more thing you have to do before you go, okay? And so so we've pulled the, we've pulled the tax record, um, we have done our CMA and we have done the listing presentation. The last thing you need to do ahead of time before you go to the property is go into dot loop and get all of the forms ready to go. The last thing you want is to walk in there, do such a great job, and then they're like, okay, where do I sign? And then you're not ready. They say that in the, uh, the fanatical prospecting book. So you like right. show up like you're ready to close. Yep. Don't show up like, hey, just dropped in to tell you something. And then they're like, I'd like to buy that. And you're like, what, today? Right, today, what, say what? <laughs> exactly. So, okay, so you're gonna go into dot loop and pull up the listing forms. Now, I can review that with you, but I think you've done it. And if you need help doing that, then that's fine. We can do that another time because I want to move on to the actual um, appointment. Okay. okay, so you get to the appointment. He walks in. Inevitably, I would say 95% of the time, the sellers will look at you and go, well, what do you want to do first? <laughs> right? And so I, um, as much as I like, I try to let people think they have control. They don't but I try to let them think they do. Because when people think they have control, they're more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, it's your house. What would you like to do? Well, I don't know. Do you want some water? Would you like this? Would you like that? Yeah, sure, I'll take water or no, I won't or whatever. And they're like, well, I've never done this before. Okay, well, why don't you show me your house? I'd love to see it. Okay, so truly the goal is, let me see the house, right? Mm -hmm. You have to see the house in order to be able to then speak educatedly because you now have done your comps. You've seen the active competition on the market. You now, a lot of your dialogue in this appointment is going to be how the house performs against others, right? 
And what do they need to do to maximize and optimize the presentation of the property in order to get the most buyers and the most money in the best terms, right? So you're gonna walk through the house and you're gonna ask questions about you know, the systems and the, and, and, and the upgrades that they've done. You're going to also form opinions. Listen, you, you know, this is, again, this goes back to, you know, showing property and doing property visits. You know, when you walk into the room and, and the walls are have, have a crazy color on it, like the shirt I'm wearing or something, you have to tuck that nugget back in your head. I wouldn't say it right away unless they ask you, right? A lot of times when you're doing this walk and talk, they'll go, I was thinking about replacing the carpet in here. What do you think? And if it's egregious and it's a hard yes, you can go, yep, we probably should do that. If it's like, well, you know, it's not that bad. Let me see the rest of the house before I, you know, make a final decision on that. Then you say that, you know, I'm not sure. Let me, let me just make a note and we'll go from there. Okay. The other thing I think we can conceivably do is I will go through and use Evernote. But with Teams, I think we can go through and use um, OneNote. So open up a, um, um, a note and you can take pictures and you can take notes and you can, you know, you can say, can I take pictures while we're walking through here? Um, you're you're going to, as you're walking through and having, you know, been the server that you are for as long as you are, you will, I, I, I'd be surprised if you're not going to be good at what I'm about to tell you to do. You need to take mental and mental and physical stock into what the house looks like, into what their furniture is, how it's laid out, how does the how is the flow, right? Because you have to pretend like you're walking through the property with a potential buyer, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're walking through in your head with that potential buyer, you can hear the objections in your head right of what a buyer would say a buyer is going to be like oh my god i hate these floors or you know or wow this room is really tight or wow like you know this is what buyers say when you're showing properties so your goal is to help facilitate creating um or overcoming many of those objections before we even go on the market right so you walk into the bedroom and there's too much furniture in there right so you you say to yourself, there's too much furniture in here. Can I repurpose any of the furniture in other parts of the house or do they need to get a storage space? So there's a lot going on in my head when I'm walking through a property about how to present it in the best light, right? Um, do we need to um, remove, rearrange? You know, oftentimes we can take a chair from one room and put it in another room and it like magically makes so much difference. So you have to really get through the whole house, right? They may also say to you, well, I was thinking about doing this, but I wasn't sure. Let me look at the house first and see where we are in the priority list. Because there's going to be stuff that is like, absolutely, we need to do it before we get the property on the market. Or, you know, hey, no, we don't. For example, and this is where we start talking strategy. Buyers buy on aesthetics. 90% of the time, right? So you want them to fall in love with the house first. If the roof needs to be worked on, they're, they're not looking at the roof, you can fix the roof later, depending on what kind of contract you get. But you want, you can't, if you don't have a buyer in a contract, then it doesn't necessarily matter, right? Mm -hmm. That you have a brand new roof, nobody gives a shit, right? So you need to focus on the things that are going to generate you a contract, which is you have to put together the wow factor. Now you already know how to talk about Compass Concierge, right? We don't need to talk about that. Yeah. They can use it for anything, right? Now, the other piece to presenting the property for sale is, and you've never been on a listing appointment with me, is I am not the realtor that tells you to take all of your pictures down and paint everything white. That's not who I am. I don't believe that buyers like a neutral, sterile home. They actually like to walk into a warm, happy home, right? They like to see that. Now, if you have, and this is what I always say, 
if you have literally 95 pictures of yourself as a bride on the wall, like some houses, some people do, then, you know, maybe we can take, you know, some of them down. Um, but for example, in your, like for the, the, the beautiful art on your wall behind you, I would never, ever tell you to take that down. Right. I think it's gorgeous. Um, I, and, and sometimes people are like, people want to take down religious things and things like that. And I'm like, unless it is egregiously offensive, yeah. a swastika sign, bullshit like that, unless it's egregiously offensive, I, I, a year, a bunch of years ago, somebody had an altar in their house. I was like, y y this, this needs to go. Um, you know, other than that, I'm, I'm like, no, don't take not it down. Altar. Right? <laughs> huh? I said, not an altar. Oh yeah. It was an altar. Put it in the backyard. That way it's like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. They had an altar in the house and I was like, okay, this needs to go. Um, you want to, you know, that the average buyer wants clean and sexy. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to create. Take before pictures, help them. Now, if you aren't feeling super confident, although I don't agree, I think you are, but if you're not feeling super confident, you can have a stager do like a walk and talk with you, you know, um, mm -hmm. to go through the house. Like I've had stagers, like we had this one house that had a really odd floor plan. And I just in my head could not like rearrange the furniture to make it work for me. And she came in and just doot, 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 and changed everything around. And, and, and that was great. Hold on one second. Randy's calling me. Hey girl. Hey, no, um, that's a long story, but I'm actually on a call with Asia. So, um, uh, let me call you back because I do have an hour because I have to drive up to Avatar for a final walkthrough. So can I call you back? Okay, cool. Bye. Um, I hadn't talked to Randy in a few days, so I... Is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. She's at the beach um, oh, moving okay. to her condo finally. But she's great. Okay. <laughs> she, she's on vacation. Okay. <laughs> um, so as you're walking through, you want to create a um, a plan of what needs to be done so um and then understand that the seller needs to understand that this is not upgrades someone's scamming the shit out of me what is going on why huh? something about a vehicle that i rented is critically overdue like who stole my identity opened a bank account and rented a car nobody don't click any links girl I'm not clicking any links. They just called me and I was like, I'm on a call. So like they'll leave a message, but that's the message that they left. Um, interesting. Okay. I'll I bet it's here. all scam. I'm no. sure it is. I gotta go. I do have to go to the bank because the bank did send me a letter saying my account was overdrawn and closed an account that I never opened. Oh, good times. Anyway, <laughs> when you go through the home, you want to you have to, okay, if you wind up with a, you know, massively long list of shit, like let's say you walk in and you're like, oh shit, this needs a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've already told me that he is not the greatest homeowner, which means you're going to have, you're probably walking into, and he's a bachelor, right? No, he has a girlfriend, but he's still like, he needs a condo or an apartment. The house thing is. <laughs> right now the other thing too is i i can potentially do this with you you know and you can see me in action with him like rearranging this that and the other thing like i i just it's it's kind of a, a head skill that i have like i walk in and you when you first walk in the house you want the, there's there's like a series of what i call wows when you're working with a seller right first off um, the first showing is online, meaning that when they see it on the computer or their phone and the photos, you want them going, wow, wow, I can get all this for that, right? You want all these wows online, right? Then you have to keep the wows going in real life. 
So when they walk in the door, you want them to go, wow, this is so awesome. I love this. It looks just like it did online, right? Because when they come out to the property, they've already decided to buy it. When they get to the property, they are validating their decision. Right. They are walking in there with every expectation that they are going to buy this house. They love it. So you have to then keep those wows going, right? So so it has to represent the same as it did online. It can't smell like shit, mm -hmm. which is a very difficult topic with people. Mm -hmm. If their yeah. house does not smell good, it's difficult. But yeah. smells are a massive turnoff. So approaching these things delicately is important. Um, and then you're looking for two things when you're walking through the house. Is this a reason that someone will decide not to buy the house? Or is this a reason that someone's going to ask you to make a repair or reduce the price? So is it something that actually needs to be fixed, okay? So the first one is, is this a reason that somebody decides not to buy the house? Is it curable? Is it a flow problem? Is it a updating problem? Is it an old, is it an ugly paint color or nasty carpet problem? Is it fixable? If it's not fixable, then now you now that uh, applies to your price and marketing package, right? Because if it is an objection, so what we want to do with this getting ready is we want to do as much removal of objections buyer objections as humanly possible so that we have the most interested parties you get the most offers which will give you the best terms and the most money okay so you go through the whole house i don't comment because often at times i might make a comment in the living room and then i see something way more egregious in the bathroom and i'm like actually the bathroom needs to be updated more than the living room so i really don't say a whole lot of things until i've seen the entire house and i create the priority list in my own head mm -hmm. okay so then once we've gone through the whole the whole house and the whole outside of the house then we sit sit down and we review the comps now I pull up the digital product on the on the Compass website and I look through the comps. Okay. Um, but before I start going into the comps, I say, okay, how much are how much are you willing to do to maximize your your value here? And they may say, I don't want to do anything. I don't have any money. Okay, that's fine. Compass can lend you the money, it, you know, so long as everything qualifies. Okay. Or they might go, I'm not going to qualify. I'm behind on my mortgage. I owe that, whatever, right? And in that case, okay, if you can't do anything, we can clean it. Maybe, you know, box some stuff up. And, and there's another phrase I say, you're going to you're, pack it now or pack it later, you're moving. So you might as well pack up, you know, get a head start on it. And then that way the buyers can see and you'll you'll be able to, you know, hopefully get more money, right? So pack it now or pack it later. And then you're going to review the comps and the strategy, the soft strategy that you just put in your head when you went through the property, right? Um, we're gonna paint this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do, you did this with the condo, the th but the condo was empty. This house is not going to be empty because they're still living there, right? right. So well, you go quite empty, but we- Right. Understood. So then you go through the comps and then you're gonna work yeah. together and establish the price. But do a range now. When you talk about a range, once because again, remember you haven't you have a soft range in your head when you go over there, right? Like we we've got those two forty one numbers, so that's sort of the target at this point. Can we get two forty two fifty for the house? That's the target, right? But you're not going to say that until you've gone through the house, right? And you also still also need to know are the systems updated because that will once the buyer falls in love with the house. If the systems are updated, then even better than it's going to help seal the deal. If the systems are not updated, it's not going to be a huge big deal, but you may not get the extra money, right? So if the systems are updated, great. So then you're like, okay, the systems are updated, this and that. Here's our plan. Um, I always give a range where my target price for listing is at the very, very, very top, right? So let's say the target price for listing is 240. 
I'm going to go in there after I've looked at the house, gone through the house, gone through the comps with them, and I'm going to go, I think we're somewhere between the 220 and 240 range. <laughs> go low. And you think he may turn around and go, yep, I was thinking 225. In which case, you know, if you put that shit on, two, on for 225, it'll go like that, right? Okay. And then you have to adjust up or down. Oh, I was really hoping for 250. Okay. Well, this two, only one house has sold for 250 in the entire neighborhood. And that house was a complete flip. You're not there. This is where you have to have the very difficult conversations in a very pragmatic, matter of fact way. You're not offending them. You're not doing this is it is what it is. Um, and then what are you willing to do? And then let's make a plan. Now, here's how I softly close on them is I just create the schedule. I can have my my contractors here paint this room, replace this, do this by next week, and, and then we would order the photography here on this day, and then I get the photos back here, and then I can create the marketing assets, and then we could be live on this market. When when what was your timing like? So I immediately that's how I close people. Asia is I just start talking timeline. I don't actually ask for the business. I just start putting a timeline together. So I, in a way, skip that, right? Because I feel like that's a little too salesy. So I just launch into the consultative part of creating the timeline, right? right? And then when they're like, oh, okay, that great. That sounds great. Okay, great. I'll send you the listing paperwork. Um, you can then go on to dot loop, apply the signatures, and then bam, you're done. You haven't even asked them. Now, let's say, so the, the only other piece to the appointment is talking about the money. OK, and this is where I need to know the Philly transfer taxes and closing costs a little bit better. Um, and you can either have Settlement Engine help you or somebody else. But this is the one place I'm, I'm not because I can do this in Maryland, but I can't I, I don't feel comfortable doing it for you here in Philly. But what I've done that makes it easier and maybe ask Mike to help you out with this specific piece of the conversation is I take my commission which is the 6%, and then I add another 2 or 3% depending on what jurisdiction I'm in, Okay. right? So a total of 8 or 9%. And then I reverse engineer that, right? So let's say it's 8%, then that means the opposite is 92, okay? Right. So let's say in this case, your seller, let's say that 250 is the right number, okay? And um, based on what you see, right? And they owe, let's say they owe 150, okay? So then I take my calculator and they owe 150000, and I divide by 0 0.92, that's called grossing up, okay? So when you do that, I'm gonna get a number higher than 150. I got 163. Mm -hmm. OK, so then if we sell it for 250, you say take 250 minus 163 and you should get 87,000 back after you've paid me, the buyer's agent, the taxes, your mortgage is paid off, everything. I lump it all together. Right. So then they typically don't ask me what my commission is because I've told them what their net is. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, so I do that after we've established the price, then I go in and I reverse engineer what their net is. Which is the commission plus the clo the jurisdictional closing costs. Inverted. So you do. do did you understand that math? I know it's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand so that. we just need to. So if you guys want to charge seven. Right then it might be 10%, right? So then you would just do 0 0.90, right? Mm -hmm. So you take the mortgage amount, divide by 0 0.90, and you get their total um, total expenses against the purchase price, okay. right? And so then you say, look, this is quick numbers. It's fast numbers. It's, you know, I don't know if, you know, I would, you know, I want to validate with this with the title company, um, but this I'm usually within a few thousand dollars. If, you know, if $87,000 works for you, then, then, then this, how do you feel about that? 
you know, and they're like, oh, okay, great, great. I'll go ahead and send over the paperwork. Now, when they ask you, hey, you know, I, um, I see that you're charging, you know, 7%, right? That was included in the figures you were okay with. <laughs> it's a great way to skirt right on by. Um, it's, it's a little sneaky, but not. It's, it's totally honest. It included everything. Right. And then what happens is you get their buy-in on their net, and then they can't argue with you. It's great. Yeah. My little tricks. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Um, and then you send over the paperwork. So now you've got this listing presentation. You need to preview properties. Okay. Was that helpful? It was. Thank you. Good. Um, yeah, it all kind of happened so fast with uh with John and his condo because he was like, "Oh, can you come today?" So we just kind of like rolled with it. Like, well, we're going today, so so that's that's what's happening. Um, so this was very helpful. Hi, Kat. Um. um so I have to drive up to Haverty Grace. So now we were we did that for an hour. I thought we could get it done in a half an hour and we didn't. I'm gonna stop recording. How do I stop recording? Oh, here. Here? Yeah, I think in that same three dots, it'll yeah. Okay.